Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the NC. For the second straight season, the Royals have won seven straight series after the All-Star break. And with a win tonight in Minnesota, the Royals can make it eight straight winning series for the first time in 23 years. Royals baseball is next on Fox Sports Kansas City. Minneapolis, where with a victory tonight, the Royals can take three out of four from the Minnesota Twins. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark. I'm Ryan Lefevre. You remember last year, the Royals had a disappointing finish right before the All-Star break. But after the All-Star break, they won seven consecutive series. This year, the Royals lost four in a row after the All-Star break. They dropped to two games below 500. And then they won seven consecutive series. They have won 20 of their last 25 games. The Royals have been waiting on offense all year. And in those last 25, just a shade under five runs per game, the Royals are one of the best in baseball when they score five or more runs. They are getting power, and they are pitching better. And as we welcome in Rex Hudler, you know, last year, Hud, there was a feeling that the offense really took off in the second half. That's not really true. There were a couple of players who took off in the second half. But just like this year, the pitching went to a whole nother level. It has. And the model of consistency that Ned's been getting over this period of time we're talking about is a dream for any manager. If you can get that kind of starting pitching and then have the lead into the seventh inning, whoo, that's a great formula for success. And in any era, Vargas, he's been getting the job done, looking super out there with his scalpel. Shields is being the leader, no question about it. He's given that bullpen some breaks after that complete game shutout, and they're getting some runs. The bats have been unbelievable. They're coming on. Billy Butler, since he's played first base, he's really gotten going. Gordon, he's hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Aoki, where'd he come from? All of a sudden, they're getting contributions from everywhere up and down that lineup, and that is a beautiful thing. And in that rain yesterday and with two delays, Jeremy Guthrie went seven innings, keeping that bullpen rested, and the Royals have the best in the major leagues beginning in the seventh inning. Joel Goldberg is coming up next.
21 times this year, and it was the long ball as part of the offensive onslaught yesterday. Alex Gordon, Salvador Perez, and Josh Willingham going deep, tying a season high with three homers in one game. Royals have done that now four times and won all four of those games. Joel Goldberg back here at Target Field. It has been pitching. It has been defense, but lately it has also been offense, tying a season high with 12 runs yesterday. And while Phil Hughes stifled them for one game, the offense has really been rolling and had a chance to talk with hitting coach Dale Swaim about that and what the biggest factor has been. Timely hitting. You know, we've, we've been hitting with guys in scoring position. Uh, you know, when we get a chance, everybody gets people on base. It just depends what you do when, when, when they're on base. And, and lately we've been getting those big hits and, and uh, separating the game a little bit. And, and uh, obviously yesterday, uh, you know, home runs. But, um, you know, all, all those kind of things help at the end because you're trying to keep the back end of your bullpen from, from getting in these games. Well, those hitters will be trying to get after young Trevor May, who in his first career start struggled. First pitch is coming up next. Kansas City Chevy dealers make your move to Chevrolet today. Buy the Missouri Lottery. Try the new Lucky Sevens playbook. And by ATT Uverse. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. There are thunderstorms everywhere around downtown Minneapolis, but thankfully not over target field at the moment and there have been very few dark clouds over the Royals lately they have won 20 of their last 25 and have a game and a half lead over Detroit the Tigers do not play tonight so the final game of this series and then the Royals head to Denver for two Royals batting order presented by your Midwest Ford dealers and lately Gerard Dyson's been getting a lot of playing time. Yep, it's nice to see Ned with that top and the bottom covered with some speed in there. I tell you, that could be the key tonight against May. Get those, get on base and maybe attract me to break out. See if they can make the already nervous Mays a little more nervous. And we're speaking of Trevor May, big Trevor May, 6'5, 215 pounds. The statistic whip. Walks and hits allowed per innings pitched. It's only two appearances, but he's at about three and a half runners per inning. 
Yeah, you know, it's early. He's had a start and then he pitched a little bit out of the bullpen, but what he's got overall is a fastball that 90 to 93 good downhill angle with that six foot five height. He's going to leave a lot of them up over the middle, though, and, and he can be hit. He's young, he's unproven, doesn't have real good command with his fastball. He's got a 12 to 6 rolling curveball behind him. Is Eric Fryer highlighted? Ooh, doesn't look good as far as the stats go for stolen bases. Opponents have ripped him off constantly, and that's going to be their theme tonight. Let's see if they can get on base and make. Trevor May a little bit more nervous. Curveball 12 to 6, slider, short break. He leaves it up in the zone. Change up. He's got a little bit below average command with it. So the, he's, he, he's going to walk some batters, so the Royals might want to be patient first time through. Field and Colbreth is the crew chief. He's at third base. Dan Iasonia rejoins this crew. So David Rackley goes back to his minor league assignment. Chris Siegel will call the Balls and strikes tonight. Nori Aoki was part of the Royals' seven run second inning yesterday. He singled, stole a base, drove in a couple of runs, scored a run, and takes strike one. He has really picked up his running game lately with six stolen bases in the Royals' last 11 games. Escobar goes to the middle and throws out Nori. One down in the first. Yeah, you know, the sooner you can get to a young starting pitcher, the better because it puts some nerves on him. And maybe you can get him rattled and maybe he can't recover. But he's had some issues with walks as well. 24 years old. Originally from the Phillies organization, all one, two, Infante. He was their fourth round pick in 2008, and then three years later, he was the Phillies minor league pitcher of the year and considered their best prospect in 2012. And then the trade Ben Revere going to Philadelphia, Vance Worley, who's no longer with the Twins, and Trevor May coming to Minnesota. Another ground ball to Escobar at short. A little more difficult play, and he throws on the run to get Infante. Two down. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time in today's game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Sal goes after the first pitch, and that's off of Plouffe's glove and into left field. Sal had one of the three home runs yesterday. He is on with two outs. I hope they give him a hit. May's coming in there. They're going to give him a base hit on it. That'll work for Salvi. He's coming in there with him fastballs early, so I think it didn't take an aggressive offense like the Kansas City Royals to wait long on him. Man. If he keeps throwing them first pitch fastballs in there, you're going to see some guys jumping on him. Billy takes ball one. Billy's hit in six straight. And now over the last two weeks, the Royals' last 14 games, he's hitting 393 to get his. Overall average up to 280. 2-0. Oh. He was at 267 before this stretch of games. Getting the average up to 280. He has five hits in this series, and he's ahead in the count, 3-0. and With a runner at first base, even though it's Salvi, he's not going to be an attempt to steal there probably. He rushes his delivery. He rushes a little bit. He's, he's not real comfortable when runners get on. 
has a below average move to first. So a two outs two runners. Perez infield single and that is the tenth walk. Given up by Trevor May. In five big league innings. Even though. It was a four pitch walk. Alex Gordon should be keen on that first pitch fastball he sees tonight. See if he can barrel one. We know May's going to try to come in there and get strike one with a fastball, and Gordon knows it. Alex, 355 with the runner in scoring position this year. Didn't get a strike, and now Mays missed with five in a row. Alex also had one of the three home runs yesterday. He has scored five runs in this series and has six hits. Well, he was thinking along those lines, looking at the first good pitch to swing at, and he fouled it away. That's right. That's what you do. You know, the young rookie doesn't have very good command with his slider or his changeup. So, first time through, he's going to throw mainly fastballs, and in the 12 pitches, I haven't seen anything else. And it's not like he has a overpowering fastball like uh, Ventura. 93 is what they say is max. Here's a good changeup. One and two. HUD mentioned the number. And Academy Sports and Outdoors shows us where Alex ranks with that 355 average with runners in scoring position. He is fifth best in the American League. Seventy one points higher than his overall average. Breaking ball missed badly two and two. The okay, first two breaking balls we've seen now the last two. One was a change up. That was his his curve. And there was a lot of fidgeting going on in his glove. You, you, you could tell, I could tell just by watching here that he moved his glove differently when he was throwing the secondary pitches. Hitters pick up on that kind of stuff. See him how he's re gripping. And he went back to the changeup. To get his first strikeout. So the Royals strand two in the top of the first inning. Jason Vargas coming off his first shutout of the year takes the mound in Minnesota tonight. The best starts of his major league career his sixth career shutout on Wednesday against the A's a three hit shutout. He is our key starting pitcher and he has been awfully good against Minnesota this year two and oh and three starts. 
with an ERA under one. Yep. You know, we'll see how he can rebound after that tremendous start, but hopefully he'll be the same bark as we've been able to see. No Kurt Suzuki as Eric Fryer is behind the plate. Otherwise, Danny Santana goes back out to center field, and Eduardo Escobar is at shortstop. Yeah, nice job by Ron Gardenhire to give the Royals a break by not starting Suzuki. They'll take it. Vargas retired the final 23 hitters. And that A's game. So he's on a little streak. He's on a little roll. Let's see how far he can roll it. He's four batters away from a perfect game. Right? Perfect. <laughs> one and one on Santana, who is on a roll when the Royals arrived in Minnesota for Friday night. He had a six game hitting streak. Got his batting average up into the 320s, but he's just one for 14 in this series. And Ron Gardenhire refers to him as Minnesota's igniter. And he's only been on base a couple of times. And there goes the perfect game. No drama at all. And the no hitter. Right out of the window, all with one swing. It's all good for Vargas, just as long as he can get the next guy, roll him up. Defensively, why not highlight Vargas? That's right, we already talked about that, but it's over now. It's all good. He's been extremely good as far as command goes as well. He's gone 18 and a third without a walk. He's been good. He's going to make, make them swing the bats. Strike to Dozier. Maybe that's a good sign for Vargas that Santana got a base hit. Because prior to Vargas retiring the last 23, the A's got three hits from their first six hitters. And then that was it. From the end of the second inning until the end of the game, the A's didn't have one single base runner. It's a pretty good spot that last pitch there. Vargas mixing in his curveball and changeups early. That's those are his really good secondary pitches, mainly the changeup. And he's got a fastball that he'll try to get ahead with. Some high 80s, might hit a 90, but very good where he places it. Smart. Knows how to pitch. Has great tempo. Good mound presence. He knows his craft. Two and one. So Vargas this year against Minnesota, and there's a common theme with those three starts. Every start, he has gone at least seven innings, and he hasn't allowed more than two earned runs in any of those starts. And over the last two, he has 14 consecutive scoreless innings against the Twins. Now two and two on Dozier. So this is a bad matchup, not just because of what Vargas has done this year, but in approach, Minnesota, they like to take a lot of pitches. They like to take their walks. And that's the wrong approach against a guy like Vargas. He doesn't walk anybody. No. He lives on the edges, just like that. Likes to pitch inside for effect. And they know it. Dozier, three for 11 off of him in his career. Fastball away is pulled to Moustakis. Santana was running, so no chance for a double play. But the Royals get Dozier, and there is one down.
We've seen two of the best pitchers in the American League in throwing strikes and avoiding walks. Our Toyota League leaders. We saw Phil Hughes on Saturday. Look at that. Just 15 walks all year. And next on the list, Jason Vargas and David Price. That's among starters who have gone at least 140 innings this year. And there at the bottom, Minnesota has drawn the second most walks in the American League. Joe Maurer homered yesterday. He now has 98 career RBIs against the Royals. Escobar made a move and that may have hit Santana keeping that ball at a center field. Yep, there's a break. Joe Maurer, he's got good numbers against everybody. You see, this is a timing play. I'm going to give that middle infielder, in this case Escobar, a good feed, try to give him something up so he can catch it. He rakes him. Everybody he's got good numbers against. Nine of those ten hits are singles, and now Santana goes for third. That was a gutsy play. With Maurer batting, there is no interference from the hitter. Salvador Perez has a clear line down to third, but never got the grip. Nope. Salvador saw him go, and he leaned on that left shin guard, but he couldn't get a grip. And he throws just as hard from his knee as he does standing up. If he located that where Moose could have tagged him, they probably would have thrown him out. That's the first stolen base of the series for Minnesota. And the Royals will bring the infield in. When the series began on Friday, the Royals were tied with Minnesota for the most stolen bases in August. Minnesota was really picking up their running game. But the Royals have shut that down, or had shut that down in the first three games, and now Santana has a first inning stolen base tonight. Three and one. Yep, you know pretty much Maurer's going to hit that ball to left field. And what Vargas is thinking that he maybe he can get him to hit it at one of his drawn in infielders. Like, you know what shot right here right here either one of them guys to take care of that. Maurer wants to get elevated with one. Get him on the board. Good pitch in on him full count. So he went away fastball and then he came way in there. Would have been ball four, but that's a good pitch. Maurer, a little bit tardy on it. Now our 230 hitter with a runner in scoring position for them this year. 234 overall as a team are the Twins. Not that great. Oh. And he gets a strikeout. Maurer thinks it hit the ground. And now home plate umpire Chris Siegel says it did hit the ground. Royals dugout wants a little better explanation. And I think they saw what we saw up here in the booth. And it was a. No, now they are going to call it a strikeout. That's what I thought. I was going to say it looked like he signaled strikeout. And. Mauer didn't go anywhere, and the Royals said, wait a minute, there's a foul ball. And he said, no, it's a strikeout. And that's when Mauer realized he was out. Yep. It was a fine pick by Salvi. Regardless of if it bounced or not, he kept his hand, his glove right on it, soft hands. Gardenhire, he wants help. He's saying, ask one of your buddies. Gardenhire might get ran early in this one. 
You're not allowed to argue balls and strikes very long, so he'll have to be careful with what he says. It's a huge out if it stands. Okay. All right. Upset. That's a tough call, though. I mean, it, if you're Chris Siegel, Salvador Perez's glove is in the way. He's going to get ran. Yep. I'm telling you, here it comes. Chris Siegel just threw him out. Oh, okay. I knew it. Gardenhire, his temper has not been very long. He's got a short fuse. You know, I think part of the, I think part of the problem. And it goes back to Siegel's call. I think he, he didn't emphatically say strikeout or emphatically say foul ball. I thought he was saying strikeout. And then Maurer didn't go anywhere. So Ned Yost wanted to know, well, why isn't he going anywhere? So I think Ron Gardenhire feels like there was some indecision. And... But there's nothing there's nothing the base umpires can do. I mean, it's easy to say, can you ask one of the other umpires? But they're a long way away from that. They don't have a a better look at that play. No, he's frustrated. And he probably went down in there and somebody told him, hey, it bounced. So that's when he went out there and said, I just saw the replay. It bounced, you know, so that's probably what happened. Most teams have television monitors down underneath. Not in their dugouts, but up underneath in another room. Fifth time Ron Gardenhire has been ejected this year and the 72nd time of his career. Kenny Vargas takes a strike. Santana's at third with two down. How many times do you think this matchup's ever ha happened from Vargas versus Vargas? Oh, and two. I believe this is number one. First time it's ever happened in so Major League history. We had the first Duffy Duffy in the Giant series, and now the first Vargas Vargas. Isn't that exciting? Good spot, and Kenny Vargas thought about it. He has shown the Royals in this series why. Minnesota is so excited about his future. Hit an impressive home run yesterday. He's driven in four in the series and has 15 RBIs in his first 15 games. Vargas threw the first two pitches from the windup. And he kept che checking on Santana, the runner. Moose is way back almost on the outfield grass. So he's a little bit nervous about Santana getting a big lead and possibly stealing home. So he said, you know what, forget that. I'm going to go from this, this stretch. Good idea. Don't let him in your mind. Just get that hitter. You can see how he grips that changeup. But you notice how the top part of his glove covers his entire wrist, almost up to his forearm. He really hides it well. And he, you need to. I mentioned it earlier. Hitters, they've watched that glove. I bet you he throws a change up here. As good, good a command as he's got with that pitch. And you know that the hitter, Kenny's Vargas, is going to be looking for a fastball here. He got a change up, and he popped it up. 
And Fonte makes the play, so the Twins had a runner at third with one out, and Vargas strikes out Maurer and gets Vargas to pop out. Terry Steinbach, Minnesota bench coach, is now acting manager as Ron Gardenhire was ejected in the bottom of the first inning. Remember, fans, to tweet your photo using hashtag KC Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown during tonight's game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. A couple of Minnesota natives on Twins coaching staff. Terry Steinbach, Paul Molitor. Both grew up here and finished their careers with the Minnesota Twins and now part of their coaching staff. Josh Willingham hit an impressive home run in the ninth inning yesterday into the third deck. That was his 35th career home run here, the most of any player. This ballpark opened in 2010. He told me before the game this is the first time he ever hit one in the upper tank. He said he'd hit a few over there by right right by the foul pole digital warehouse sign over there. He'd hit a few over there right by the pole but he never went to the upper part of the stadium here. One ball two strikes. Then my next question to him was have you ever styled a home run. Have you ever styled? You know, you ever shown a pitcher up? You know, you don't mean to show a pitcher up anyway, but sometimes you're going to watch him. He said he has watched a few. Smash. Good play at short by Escobar. Well, he gave it a good try. Throwing from his back. And Willingham has an infield single. Well, if he has styled a home run in the past, it didn't happen yesterday. Our AT&T U-verse rewind. No, he's he's buddies with Brian Dunsing. He's not going to show up his buddy. Those are friends. He knew it right away. Didn't want to make eye contact with Dunsing at all. And Dunsing followed him around the bases, walking around the mound, watching him. Pitchers do that sometimes. And Willingham said, I, I couldn't look at my friend. I couldn't look at him. Strike to Moustakis. Two out of 12 in the series with a run scored. He wanted that first pitch fastball there. He just said, ah, I'll wait till later. Oh, and two. He said, I like the first one better. Okay. 
Twins not playing that big pull shift on Moose. He's got some lanes. Also hoping for a ground ball double play. Moose has ground into seven of those this year. See if you can keep an eye on May, the young pitcher's glove. See if you can see him go into his glove and dig around in there because he's he's trying to find his secondary pitches and it's a different grip than his fastball, so he's moving his glove around. And a soft liners into center field for a base hit. The Royals open the second inning with back to back singles, and Willingham uh, tries for third, and the Twins were ready for it. Santana, a shortstop by trade, has a really good arm. Probably was a mistake. It wasn't hit that hard now. See, and that's what Willingham's thinking. It's not hit that hard. Santana comes up with it, gathers himself, and makes a perfect strike. Now, if it's a bad throw, he might have been able to get in there, but that's his third outfield assist. Nice to see an aggressive base running mistake once in a while by a veteran. Like Willingham. There's nothing wrong with that. Early in the game. Managers want their guys to not be afraid to take that extra base. Especially. The run and gun Kansas City Royals. Escobar grounds to short. So that out of third. Was big. The double play ends the inning. Two hits, but only three come to the plate in the second inning. Toss complete games in back to back starts. Jason Vargas will try and do that tonight after his shutout on Wednesday. Zach Greinke, Luke Hochaver, Gil Mesh, or James Shields are your selections tonight. All good starters. I'm going with A. Oswaldo Arcia. He homered yesterday. He's driven in three in the series. Trevor Plouffe will follow, and then Chris Parmalee. Vargas had a runner at third base with one out in the first inning and got out of it. 
Escobar right up the middle shows off his arm in time to get Arcia. Arcia looks into the Twins dugout as he walks back slowly. You hit a ball back up the middle like that. You leave that batter's box saying, all right, I like my chances. And then you see Escobar get it, gathers himself and gets some momentum going back. You know here comes the howitzer cannon. He's digging hard. Runs pretty well, too, for a power guy. Got him by plenty. Escobar has one of the best arms out there. No doubt on this team and as shortstops, I'd say he's one of the best in the league. I'll be surprised if Escobar does not win his first gold glove this year. If he's continued to be blessed with good health. Strike one on Trevor Plouffe. One and one on Trevor Plouffe. He was not in the lineup yesterday in game three. One for eight in the first two games. One and two. Great change up. Good call by Salvador Perez. And that's the second strikeout for Vargas. And that's really good signal calling, like you mentioned, Ryan, especially when he struck out Vargas to end the inning last inning. Three and two change up to a young hitter. That's good. But right here for, for Plouffe. Well, he popped out Vargas. Didn't strike him out, but it was a great pitch selection. It's going to keep him guessing with all the pitches he's got. Fastball, he cuts his fastball, slider, curve, changeup. With Salvador Perez's reputation, it's easy to tell a pitcher, well, just take the sign from Sal, trust him, and just go with it. I think Vargas epitomizes that more than anyone else. I don't know if I've seen Vargas shake off Sal. He is a fast working pitcher. And he trusts his catcher. He gets the sign and he just goes to work. That's one of the things I, I like most about him. I know a lot of fans talk about you know, how confident he looks with that fast tempo. And that's exactly the same thing the hitters that oppose him see. And how he walks off of that mound onto the grass with his glove out saying give me give me the ball back. Parmalee's had some success. Oh. Right where they wanted it, three and two. Wide open left side. It wasn't hard hit. Well, Parmalee, he's surprised the Royals a couple of times in this series. Remember, he dropped down the bun on Saturday. Now, a little crack bat roller to the left side for a base hit. Parmalee's a 316 hitter against Southpaws this season. Two of his six home runs have come against the lefties, so he's had a nice number. He's very confident against lefties. All the credit publicly. Goes to Vargas for what he did on Wednesday against Oakland. Just a brilliant pitching performance. But the first words out of his mouth when he was interviewed after the game was praise for Salvador Perez. Talking about the game that Sal called. And I thought it was interesting too. Vargas has that great changeup, and we've seen him fool the twins already tonight. But Vargas said he noticed early in the game, Salvador Perez noticed early in the game that the A's were up on the plate. They were up in the box. They were sitting on his changeup, and Vargas and Perez, their strategy changed, and they basically beat the A's with his fastball that night because of what Perez noticed the hitter's movement in the batter's box. He's a, he's a student of the game of catching, that's for sure. That's one of the things that impressed pitching coach Dave Island the most in 2012 when Dave Island was hired here. 
He said the fact that Salvador Perez can retain a game plan throughout the whole game, no matter who's pitching, is impressive. It's highly intelligent for his age and lack of experience at that particular time, and look how he's grown in three years. And look how he, before he gave the sign, he's watching the hitter's feet as Fryer gets in the box. Had him fooled on a changeup. Escobar throws on the run, and that's the inning. Two scoreless innings for Vargas. And at the end of two in Minneapolis, no score. by Panera coming soon to college and King in Overland Park and by your Midwest Ford dealers visit your Midwest Ford dealers.com here you go some angry looking clouds when you look in just about every direction here Royals are trying to take three out of four a lot of fans here at Target Field rooting on the Royals But not a single raindrop since the first pitch. Dyson, Ioki, and Infante in the third inning against Trevor May. Two for seven in this series with another stolen base. He is 17 for his last 17 in stolen base attempts. One ball, one strike. Just saw Trevor May right before that last pitch. Exhale a big deep breath. And you get the feeling a young guy, a lot of nerves on the mound, a lot of excitement, that if he could get through three or four, and calm down. He could be a handful. Two balls, two strikes. Ron Gardenhire described him as a raging bull in the first two innings because he's just so excited. Reminded me when I read those comments from Gardenhire about Danny Duffy. A young Danny Duffy. Rarely do you get a young pitcher that comes up that's got any kind of mountain presence and poise. We've seen a few. Giordano Ventura is the rare exception, or a rare exception. Wasn't, wasn't Walker last year? He make, made his major debut mm -hmm. against the Royals in that three o'clock rain out or rain delay game. He has poise. That guy, he was impressive his first time out. Duffy won game one. Guthrie won game three. 
Maurer will take it himself to get Dyson. Well, if you tweet about the Royals, if you post photos on Instagram or follow the Royals on Facebook, then join us for Social Media Night coming up on Thursday, August 28th. The Royals will be hosting the Minnesota Twins. There's a special ticket package. It includes a free pair of Royals social sunglasses, access to the pregame social hour at Rivals. There will be a Q&A with Joel and a chance to win prizes. And you can purchase those ticket packages at Royals.com slash Royals Social. Nori grounded out to short in the first inning. Ploof charges, bare hands, close and out. You know, he almost beat that out, HUD, and the Royals are going to go to the phones to see if it was the right call, and apparently it was. Ned goes back into the dugout, but here's an example there where he showed that bunt pretty early and still almost beat it out for a base hit. Yeah, it just goes to show that when you put it where you want it, you can beat it out no matter what. But it was a little bit too much off the line. You want to keep those balls on the line. It, it creates a different angle and a harder angle for the third baseman. And when you square that early, he's already on the grass. He's coming. But you put it on the line, you got a better chance. Kloof handles a two hopper and gets Infante. Omar is 0 for 2. And the Royals go down 1, 2, 3 for the first time tonight. Rain is starting, but the players are on the field. That's good news. Our Mazda game break. How about Michael Kadire? First game back coming off the DL. Been gone 60 days. Yeah, no big deal. What does he do in his first game last night? Hits for the cycle. Michael Kadire with the cycle. Seventh in Rockies franchise history. The Royals will see Kadire, the former twin, in Denver tomorrow night. He got the bucket of ice and celebrates that one well that rain shower lasted as long as the Mazda game break because it has ended or at least as I think Ryan might say it looks worse than the lights not so bad right now now we did want to talk a little bit guys about some saber metrics here we've spoken quite a few times and the moonshot there It'll be Dyson, not Gordon. But I want to talk about Gordon. Wins above replacement. War. 
And that is sort of an all-encompassing stat that takes a look at offense, defense, and base running. And this list from Fangraphs, as of today, has Alex Gordon as the major league leader in war, at least for position players. They do Fangraphs a different one for pitchers. Well, I thought this would be an interesting time, guys, to talk about this. And it also takes into account position. A guy that plays a tougher position is going to be ranked a little bit higher. There's going to be adjustment for that. And war is wins above replacement. So kind of looking at how many wins a guy is worth versus if a replacement, a minor leaguer were in there or a bench player for him. And I know a lot of folks look at this. It's a nice stat to kind of compare guys. In the, all right, hold on. What do we got here? There's a, uh, there's also the HAR statistic, which is helmet above replacement. <laughs> and Santana is in the negative now, as he went up with the wrong helmet on. Hey, what, Hud? What's the fine on that one in Kangaroo Court? Oh, that's a doozy. Especially it took some time away from the game. That'll cost it. <laughs> anyway, helmet above replacement is definitely a potential new stat. But I know that a lot of folks that felt in the sabermetric community the last two years that Mike Trout should have won the MVP, and they cited, in part, wins above replacement, which was much better than Miguel Cabrera. Now, I don't think anybody is going to suggest that Alex Gordon should be MVP, would they? Well, they, there should be, right? There you go. And there's another play showing you why as he runs deep into left center field. That's my question for you, and it's not a sarcastic question, but there are some who believe that that is a very important statistic because, like you said, it's a comprehensive, hypothetical comprehensive statistic because you never know what a replacement would have done in certain games. It's just assuming that they would be better than the replacement. Will that possibly, especially if the Royals win the division, I mean... Who was the most valuable player on a team that won? Who, what player was most valuable to his winning team? And right now, Fangraphs has Gordon at 5.7, Perez next at 2.9, and Escobar at 2.5. I think these are good reference points. You go to baseball reference, they have Alex Gordon 10th in war. So it's not really a for sure stat, especially when different sites have it different ways. Thank you, Joel. Vargas has retired nine of the last ten twins. Don't forget, FoxSportsKansasCity.com is your home for Royals coverage all season long. You can log on for game previews, recaps, videos, 
features and the latest analysis from Jeffrey Flanagan who is looking up into the sky and trying to gauge the weather. There are a few drops falling. He's really studying it, isn't he? Yeah, he's from this part of the country. Born and raised in Wisconsin. Went to college in Minnesota. And as he looked up into the sky, it started to rain harder for whatever reason. But Flanny has written a column at FoxSportsKansasCity.com talking about how Ned Yost is enjoying this run. He's always got some good stuff. I, there's another article that he did on Greg Holland that was good, too, I read. The reference to Ned, and Ned will bring it up himself. We all know that he was let go right before the Brewers went to the postseason back in 2008. And was replaced by Dale Swain, who was his bench coach. He took over as manager. The Brewers went to the postseason. Ned was with the Brewers at the very beginning of a youth movement. Lived through the the tough years. Some big loss seasons. Got them to above 500. Got them on the edge of the playoffs. And they began to struggle toward the end. And the Brewers made a change. And if you ask Ned, and I asked him a question about what's going on right now he will say oftentimes what I learned in Milwaukee and then fill in the blank and so Flanny talks about how he's handling this run as the Royals are fewer than 40 games from the end of the regular season everybody learns from experience Question I asked Ned tonight, we were talking about the lineup, and lately he's just been going with the hot hand with his outfield rotation. And of course, that's what you want to do at this point in the season. And I, my question was you know, not only is this fun that the team's contending, but as a manager, he doesn't have to start thinking about next year and the, the year after that, you know, as the Royals are developing. You know, what does it mean if he plays tonight? What repercussions does that have in 2015 and 2016? He doesn't have to think about those things right now because the time is now. As Plouffe throws out Salvador Perez. And that's when Ned said, well, what I learned in Milwaukee was that maybe they took development too far. That maybe there were too many games that they could have won sooner but they were thinking about development okay let's let this guy work through these problems and that if he had a chance maybe they would have made the transition to okay let's just start doing whatever it takes to win games right now whether this guy loses an at bat or not yep. happens sometimes look when you're managing you have to listen to the front office too all the decisions that are made on the field aren't necessarily based on the managerial decisions One and one on Billy. He walked on four straight pitches back in the first inning. Second time through. See if they can try to crack Trevor May. Mauer to his own dugout and right in front of his own dugout. Two down. First out for Trevor May in the air. He has been an extreme ground ball pitcher so far tonight in his first three and two thirds innings. Got a nice fluid delivery. Compact. Not a lot of deception. But he's throwing that four seamer right downhill. Looks like I've seen a couple of his fastballs have a little bit of tailing action, like he's using a two seamer as well.
That'll drop for a hit. Cut off deep by Parmalee. Alex going to try for two. And the throw only missed by 40 feet. Alex is in with a two out double. Great decision. With two outs and the, the hitter hits a ball like that, feels like he can get two. Why not go for it? Get into scoring position. Good touch. As you see, Alex reaching out there and going to the opposite field. And Alex knew that he wasn't out there in left field. That's right. Would he run on himself? Ball placed where it was, maybe. But the rest of the league's not gonna. He might. Ooh, man. There's some chin music. Now, the only other time that Willingham told me that he styled on a guy was when he hit him. Said, you know, I got hit early in the game one time. A guy, he wouldn't mention any names, and he said he got hit. Next time up, he took him deep, and he, he's kind of watched it at home plate a little bit there. Just to say, yeah, you're going to throw at me and hit me? This is what I can do to you. But he's a, a well mannered Southern gentleman, really. A lot of experience, a lot of power. He's made Ned's lineup look like a real American League lineup with some power in there. Across the knees to make it two and one. Good spot for May. Down. Three and one. Check swing. Boy, that hit the railing in front of the Twins dugout. And there were three coaches standing right there Scott Olger, Paul Molitor, and Terry Steinbach. Got to be alive. It happens quickly. Got to be watching the action. That's out of play. Still three and two. With two down, Alex reached with a double. Willingham has a chance to drive in his 40th of the year. Very high to center field. Santana waits and makes the play, and that's the inning. So we head to the bottom of the four. Still no score at Target Field.
the Jeep Summer Clearance Event. And by Five Hour Energy. Man, it is pouring and storming and everywhere but here. If you look in any direction, just dark gray clouds, very humid. Some flashes of lightning. We had rain that lasted for about five minutes. But no sign of the grounds crew. Yep. Nice to see that. Joe Maurer, then Kenny Vargas and Oswaldo Arcia. Vargas has retired. The Royals Vargas has retired nine of the last ten. And his biggest out tonight was against Maurer. Slicing into left center field, and that's where Dyson was playing. Don't miss your chance to grab your very own Royals eco friendly baseball cap presented by Grunfoss on Friday, August 29th, as the Royals host the Indians. If you're one of the first 10,000 fans to walk through the stadium gates, you will walk home with a brand new baseball cap. Made from 100% recycled water bottles. Gates open at 5:30. Again, that's Friday, August 29th. Royals.com 1-800-6 Royals. A new baseball cap from 100% recycled water bottles. Interesting. I'd like to have one of those. Oh and two on Vargas. He popped out to Infante in the first inning. Looks like the weather is just missing target field by the north and northwest. It is an ugly sky beyond center field. Escobar fields and he gets Vargas and there are two down in the fourth inning. So starting from there and going left to right and just missing target field and it looks like there's a little break in the clouds out to the northwest. About an hour before the game, they began to roll the tarp out. Yeah, they knew it was coming. They just didn't know where it was going to go. Good change up to Arcia, and it's 0-2. He throws them to either side, either batter. It's his pitch. But he's able to mix in the curveball and the fastball. He's a mix kind of guy. Arcia just 171 hitter with two of his 11 home runs off lefties. He'd like to up that mark a little bit so he doesn't get platooned by his manager. When a lefty comes to town, and I have a little bit higher average. Two and two. Boy, Laid off the change up, full count. Minnesota stays home. They're in the middle of an 11 game homestand. The Royals go to Denver. Two games there tomorrow night, Wednesday night. Thursday is an off day, and then next weekend in Texas against the Rangers. Back with the changeup to strike him out. Oh, that was a beauty. That is 18 consecutive scoreless innings for Vargas against the Minnesota Twins. All right. Time to get that offense in gear here. Get Vargas in support.
cooking at Kauffman Stadium, the upcoming homestand. Yankees are in for one game, Minnesota for three, Cleveland for three, Texas for three. So ten games coming up. That first game, the Royals will make up a rained out game with the Yankees. They can finally pay tribute to Derek Jeter. That was supposed to happen back in June. And when Minnesota's in town, Irish Heritage Night and a giveaway of a Royal Shamrock Green Cup set. Royals.com, 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. No score. Royals have four hits. Minnesota two hits. Mike Moustakis has one of the Royals hits. Took an 0-2 pitch into center field for a single. Alcides Escobar is on deck and then Gerard Dyson. That's hit well to center field. Santana back and makes the play. Honda brings you the MTP of the game. The most trusted player brought to you by the most trusted brand, Honda. Extremely impressive. Escobar's ability to hit that ball up the middle. 11 of his laps, 15, have been right up the middle. And a lot of times with some runners on base, getting some big RBIs. He's got a nice short swing. He's focused. It's like Mays is throwing some get me over curveballs now on first pitches. So he's moved them around all year. Not as many base hits to right field. That was interesting. Two years ago when he hit over 290, a lot of base hits to right. Grounded into a 6 4 3 double play in the second inning tonight. Mays had a pretty good changeup tonight. He's starting to find it. He's commanding. All three of his pitches. Not like his previous outing. Two and two. It's a matter of time. You know, the Royals, they feed off a of one hit. They just kind of start piling on after that. Let's hope they do. He's already settling in five pretty good innings so far. He's confident. Full count. He has only walked one. He had walked nine in his first four and a third innings. He's only had one 20 pitch inning tonight. Still three and two. A good spot for that fastball. It's on the outer half. Good plate appearance. Escobar has surpassed his walk total from last year. And he's on with one out. That's May's second walk. Also coming up on the next home stand, Saturday, August 30th, Retro Night. The Royals and Indians will be wearing uniforms from 1974. We'll have special appearances from alumni from 1974. Both teams will be wearing the retro uniforms. A live organist will be playing throughout the game and the first 10,000 fans will get that Mr. Royal bobblehead. That's a good looking jersey. I'll tell you that. Clean. Retro.
There's no buttons on that retro. Did you notice that? Right now. I did. Yeah. Wore a few uniforms like that. And it's okay. I prefer button downs as a player, but this is a nice looking jersey to slip on here. That was just a style then. I don't think anybody yeah. had buttons back there, did they? Maybe not. Dyson grounded out to Maurer at first in the third inning. You know, players, they're not too particular about uniforms, especially if you're a big leaguer. They'd wear a knapsack if you if it was a big league uniform and it was issued by the team. They're just happy to have a big league uniform on. It's a privilege. It's not a given. I'd like to see the first major leaguer that wears a knapsack out there. <laughs> so now maybe May's starting to get a little bit wild. Be a little selective, make him throw a strike here. He's a little nervous about Escobar and the base dealers. There's no question about that. Doesn't have a very good move. There's Kyle Gibson talking to Rick Anderson, their pitching coach. The Royals, fortunate they missed him. Kyle Gibson, and they're missing him at home when Minnesota comes back. Two and one on Dyson. Kyle Gibson was tough against the Royals the last time he took the slab against him. And now three and one on Dyson. Gibson through seven scoreless innings with seven strikeouts. Back on July the 29th. Now back to back walks with one out. And very good speed on the bases for Ioki. Good time for Fryer to come out and talk to his buddy. Rick Anderson is going to join him. Fryer caught May in AAA. So they're familiar. That's one of the reasons why Suzuki's getting the night off. We remind you to vote for the Royals Player of the Month at rallyhouse.com slash Royals. And you will be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. So May has walked three. He's given up four hits. So seven runners for the Royals in four and a third innings. A lot of big deep breaths. For the 24 year old Trevor May, trying to keep his heart rate down. This is the inning he feels it coming. He's going to have to do some good pitching now. Aoki, 300 hitter on the nose with the runner in scoring position. Swing that bat. Chest below the knees, ball one. Nori grounded it short in the first inning and then tried to bunt his way on in the third, and Ploof. Came in and made a good play to get him by less than a step. He topped it, and Dozier throws him out. Two down, and now two in scoring position as Escobar goes to third, and Dyson moves up to second base. And now Infante. He's been very hot and cold this year. He has. Had several stretches 0 for 10, 0 for 12, and then will go 8 for 12. And in one of those cold stretches now, he is just 4 for his last 35. But if he gets a base hit here, he could tie his career high for RBIs, and we still have. More than a month to play. 
Yeah, just hitting 196 since the All Star break. So there's not a lot of production there. You kind of wonder when Ned's going to start Cologne. And give him a break, give him a day off, maybe. Cologne's been really good. A couple lefties coming up in Colorado. He's got a little movement going with his feet. I like to see that. He's loose. Joel talked to Ned about that today. Yeah, I asked him about that because, you know, you guys talked about the outfield before, and he said that he's going with the hot hand, Dyson, right now over Kane. And I asked him, what about Omar Infante? How's he feeling? The numbers have not been good for quite a while now. And he said he believes he's capable of getting hot at any point. Seen it before. He's completely healthy. And he thinks that as a veteran, this is the guy he wants in there every single day. So. He at least was not suggesting any signs that he's going to go a different direction. That'll be back into the crowd. One and two. Hey, I mean, he's not driving any runs either. He's hitting 074 with runners in scoring position in the second half. He could use one for confidence right here. How about a lousy single? Doesn't have to rock one, just dump one out there. Two and two. Well, and Ned has said too that Bobby Cox taught him if he feels like a player should come out of the lineup or a guy should go down to the minor leagues, wait another week. And I think maybe even longer than that when you're talking about a veteran with a track record. Yep. I can agree with that. Two and two. Full count. There is an open base. However, I would think May would prefer not to face Salvador Perez with the bases loaded. No, and you can see Rick Anderson. He's a little nervous too here with even with two outs in the fifth inning. He's on that phone. You got to expect a fastball and adjust to anything else. Base hit ball four. It's ball four, so he's walked the bases loaded. And Fonte comes back from one ball, two strikes. And May will face Salvador Perez with the bases loaded. Anthony Swarzak just starting to play catch out in the second tier of the bullpen in left center field. Salvi's one for six with him loaded up this year. Salvador Perez has a 412 average with him loaded in his career. No slams. Out into shallow left center field. Salvador Perez drives in two. Perfect time for a doinker. Any way you can. Find a way. First pitch. Little slider that was out over the middle of the plate. And in my scouting report, it says that that little slider sometimes will be a cement mixer and it'll kind of just spin. That one didn't have a lot of break on it and it laid out over the middle. So I was able to chip it in. Keep it going. Two on for Billy. Infante stopped at second base. Billy has walked and fouled out to first. Center field that drops in front of Santana. Here's Infante. Santana's throw is a good one, but Fryer couldn't handle a short hop. And all three walks turn into runs. The Royals lead 3 nothing in the fifth inning. You walk that many guys, they're going to end up hurting you. And it's Royals putting on a nice little two out rally here. Now, Infante, I'd like to see him slide here at home just to save the wear and tear on his feet. 
because when you try to decelerate and slow down, sometimes that puts pressure on your ankles. But he, he, he felt like he could get in there standing up, but had a catcher come up with that ball. Fryer, he'd been out. So maybe Infante's not real hot driving runners in the second half of the season, but Billy's picking up the slack. Nine for his last 15. Picking up your teammates. That's what it's all about. You'll hear that quite a bit in the dugout. Way to pick me up. One and one on Alex. He doubled with two outs in the fourth inning. His 29th double of the year, and he's also struck out against May. One and two. Got by with a changeup right over the middle. Seen a nice little frenzy hitting starting with two outs. Usually it happens with one or no outs. <laughs> Another base hit. Sal will be held at third by Mike Gershley. That was a good call. So nine will bat in this fifth inning with three runs already in. Alex Gordon has two hits tonight and eight hits in the series. And that ninth man will not face Trevor May. Pops, good move by Jerish to hold Sal. Arcia's got seven outfield assists, got a really nice arm. He'd have been out. So you hold him up, you let the beast, Willingham. Chevy call to the bullpen and Willingham will face Anthony Swarzak. Fifth inning with one out, two walks, with two outs, another walk, and then our Chrysler drive of the game, Salvador Perez driving in the first of those two walks, Escobar and Dyson, then Billy Butler got Infante home. He had reached on a walk. And after that, a base hit from Alex Gordon to load him up, so they're loaded up again with three runs home. The Royals bat around. Anthony Swarzak will face his former teammate, Josh Willingham. Oh. 
Dillingham takes a strike. Willingham wouldn't mind adding another slam to that already nice track record. Five grand slams. Swarzak 88 to 92 with his fastball. He's got a curveball that he'll use and he's got a pretty tight slider that he'll mix in. The Royals offense with the bases loaded this year will have been well under 200 most of the year until recently now coming into this game they're hitting 233 with them loaded up we're getting a few hits and that'll climb even more I'd like to see Vargas wouldn't complain if you got him a few more runs here either. Willingham ahead in the count two and one. This is what makes him so dangerous is that he's very selective. Puts the pressure on the pitcher to throw him strikes, especially in this situation. You see where the Royals are starting to get some hits with runners out there. Bases loaded, you know, you don't, don't want to walk him, but you don't want to give him a cookie either. Two and two. It's a little too quick on that one. It's the third time in the series the Royals have batted around in the fourth inning on Friday. They turned that into a five run inning. In the second inning yesterday, it was a seven run inning. And now they've batted around here with three home. And all of those runners reach with a walk. Got him to chase the slider down and away. So. Swarzak keeps the damage at a minimum, but the Royals come through. That might be all Jason Vargas needs. A three run fifth inning for a three nothing lead. Scalpel, please. Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Still very minimal rain with storms all around Target Field. James Shields tomorrow as the Royals open a two game interleague series with the Rockies, their last two interleague games of the year. Tyler Matzik will pitch for Colorado. Danny Duffy pitches on Wednesday against lefty and former Royal Jorge De La Rosa. There's two games of the Rockies and then on to Texas to face the Rangers. Bunted 
intended foul by Ploof. So Trevor Ploof, he said, I'm going to test out Moose. I already showed you what I can do. Watch this play. See how that, that ball's on the line. He gets a base hit out of that. Good bare hand play. Vargas struck him out in the second inning. The Twins must feel like the Royals got seven in the fifth inning because Jason Vargas has pitched 18 consecutive scoreless innings against Minnesota. That's off the end of the bat. Dyson will come up to make the play. Vargas has retired the last eight and 13 of the last 14 tonight. Doing his thing, it never gets old to see the Royals with solid starting pitching one through five. I mean, you know, you're not holding your breath on your fourth, fifth starters like a lot of teams are. Twins didn't know what they were going to get today out of Trevor May. They saw a better Trevor May than they'd seen before, though. He had better command tonight. Even though he got a little wild at the end, he, he looked like he, he commanded a few of his pitches for a few innings early. But for Kansas City, they have a, a nice winning mojo going, largely because of the starting pitching. They come to the ballpark when every day saying, wow, we got a chance to win again if we all just do our jobs. Toothpicks flying everywhere as Parmley cracked his bat and he's thrown out. Your chance to bring your canine friend to Kauffman Stadium is coming up Wednesday, September 17th. Park at the park is back for a second time this year. And for just $35, you get a ticket for both you and your dog. And a Royals dog mat. A donation will be made to KC Pet Project for every ticket purchased. Aoki makes the play, and Vargas has a seven pitch fifth inning. He's retired 10 in a row. And now has 19 straight scoreless innings against Minnesota. Five more great innings by Jason Vargas. Mike Moustakis, Alcides Escobar, and Gerard Dyson coming up in our Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant is L.J. Olinger from Leewood. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, L.J. wins $3,900. If the Royals hit a Grand Slam out of the park, L.J. wins twenty-five grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Royals are due to hit a home run in this slam inning. 
They're overdue. Time to get LJ some cake. One and one on Moustakis. He is single to center field and line to center field. Swarzak got a big out for Minnesota to keep them in the game, striking out Willingham for the final out of the fifth inning. And now stays on for the top of the sixth. There's that occasional changeup. That Moose pulling off of it. Moose hovering around that 200 mark. He's hoping. That he can finish the season over two. Doesn't really matter now. It's all about the base hits he's getting with runners out there. Big hits. Perez drove in two, Butler won in the Royals three run fifth inning. And all three of those runners reached by way of a walk. You know, the inability for Moose in his batting average to hit this low, he's he's going to have to learn how to hit that ball to left field. Now, last winter he went with Pedro Grafal in the Venezuelan league, and they worked on facing more lefties and going with a two-strike approach. But once he starts figuring this out right here, his average won't be down there anymore. He'll hit, you know, 240, 250, you'd hope. But that's when those base hits. To the opposite field come in to hit for average. Ball's not carrying out there tonight. Well, we had another ice bucket challenge here. There's been one after another. This one on to Jim Polad, the owner of the Minnesota Twins. And on the right, dumping the bucket is Terry Ryan. Yeah, and look, that's that's a little cruel there. Now that's a long pour. Most people just get the bucket dumped on him. and so you experience the cold so he accepted the challenge as Escobar is going to be thrown out two down and then he called out the governor Mark Dayton sweet bigger name people more publicity for that terrible disease raise awareness Way to go, Terry Ryan. Terry now. just making sure he still has a job. <laughs> yeah, that was a little long of a pour. They're laughing at it now. It's all fun and games back in the GM booth. <laughs> and they haven't had a lot to laugh at this year. Dyson walked and scored in that three run fifth inning. Now one and one against Swarzak. One and two. Dozier charges, fields, throws quickly, and gets Dyson. And Yost. Not on the field on a close play. And he will stay in the dugout. Here is the first ice bucket challenge for ALS research. Rex Hudler and Burb Lylevin. Woo!
as Vargas begins the sixth inning with ball one. That's Sunday, August 31st. The Indians are in town. You can buy your tickets at Royals.com slash KU. You'll be eligible to receive a limited edition Kansas-themed Royals cap. Brought to you by Fox Sports Kansas City and Rally House. Speaking of caps, how is it that Rusty coaches first base with a helmet? He wears a ball cap during BP and never a hair out of place. He could be a hair model. Mm -hmm. It's a good head of hair. There's no doubt about that. How old is Rusty now? Rusty Coons. He will be 60 years old next February. Nice. Look at that hair. Mm. There you go, buddy. Vargas is first walk in a long, long time, as in 23 and a third innings. It's only the third base runner for Minnesota as they batted the sixth inning. I don't think Ned's going to get the bullpen up after that. Especially when he's only at 71 pitches. Santana led off the first with a single. Went to second on a ground ball and then to third on a stolen base. He was at third base with one out. Vargas pitched around it. One of the reasons outside of the obvious about Santana, their young shortstop slash center fielder, is that he, he's got the speed, but I like him. He doesn't hardly stride from either side of the plate. He has good hitting mechanics. So he's not jumpy. He just puts the bat on the ball, and, and he's been impressive to watch him in the series that he's played at home versus the Royals in, at the K, and then here. Both sides of the plate, very, very similar. He's going to get his share of hits. Combined with that speed. One and two as he's out in front of the changeup. Vargas has 19 consecutive scoreless innings against Minnesota. He was drafted by Minnesota out of high school in California in the 43rd round. So he decided to go to college and went to LSU. Then to a junior college, then to Long Beach State. But he had a chance to turn professional for the first time back in 2001 if he had signed with the Minnesota Twins. Two balls, two strikes. Just foul. See how he, he doesn't overcommit Santana at the plate. He, he just doesn't do too much. He just tries to barrel it. It's going to make him a tough out. Seen a lot of those swings though by Minnesota tonight. Just off balance out over their front foot. Only have two hits. Santana had the first hit. And remember. Normally he got jammed and just hit a slow roller through a wide open left side. Again reaching. Can the Royals turn it quickly? No, but they get the out at second base. He's only ground into two double plays this year, and you're not going to double him up on a ball hit that soft.
50% were correct. It was Zach Greinke back in his Cy Young season, the last time a Royals pitcher had back-to-back -back complete games. Our sprint question of the night. We thank you for texting in. Vargas is on his way. He's only thrown 79 pitches through five and a third innings. He was incredibly efficient in his shutout on Wednesday. 97 pitches, fewer than 100 pitches in his three-hit shutout. Of course, he retired the last 23. You know, they probably offered a ticket to, for James Shields to fly ahead to Colorado today. And he just likes being with the team. Uh, I'm sure he probably vetoed that and said, nah, I've got plenty of time to sleep in tomorrow. You know, players, like for anybody, sleep's extremely important. And players that baseball usually are nocturnal, so they're nighttime guys. So they usually go to bed late, sleep late. And depending on your age, you're going to sleep longer. If you're in your 30s at all, to mid 30s, you're staying in bed all day if you're an everyday player. Out at second, and once again, no double play, but the Royals get the lead runner, two down. So a couple different ways that second baseman can go out and get that ball when they go to turn in a double play. You can go across the bag, it cuts the time down on a ball hit soft, or sometimes, like Infante wanted to, deep the runner and stay off to the side. You don't have as much to throw on. But there's just different ways that, that you can protect yourself over there. Some stay up away. Some some use the base. They'll get behind the bag and make the runner slide over the base. Ten-year veteran, he knows all the angles. Ball hit slow, slowly. Typically, you want to come get that ball. Take your left foot, keep it on the bag, and then go out and get it, and then turn it out. Away from the sliding runner that way, but he elected to do it the other way. You get there quicker when you go across the back. Get the throw to first. One and one on Maurer. He was Vargas' biggest out in the first inning with a runner at third, one out. Vargas struck him out on a ball that Maurer felt, and the replay showed. Did made contact and the ball hit the dirt before going into Perez's glove. Ron Gardenhire was ejected after the strikeout. And then in the fourth inning, Maurer lined out to center field. Maurer's been raking. 353 coming into this game in his last 18. Vargas making him swing at that inside pitch. He absolutely kills balls that are middle away. Dozier is one stolen base away from a 2020 season. And at least 20 home runs, 20 stolen bases. Second time he's gotten Maurer to chase a pitch up and in and not a strike, and it's still two and two. Both times Maurer. Checking with home plate umpire Chris Siegel asking if it was a strike. You know, to be a 2020 guy, that's that's pretty impressive. This is just Dozier's third full season.
Left center field, base hit in front of Dyson. Just the second time tonight, Minnesota's had a runner pass first base. So now Vargas against Vargas. Kenny Vargas has popped a second, grounded out to short. And since the first inning, this is the Twins' only real hope to do something offensively against Jason Vargas. Got to pitch him carefully. Don't leave him anything out over. He could tie it up in one swing. Hold on the ground to Moustakis. Tough hop. It went over his glove, but Escobar was right there. Oh. And knew to throw to first. Man, really good focus on Escobar's part. And through, throwing flat-footed off balance all spread out like that? Woo-hoo! That's a gold glove play. Looked easier than it was, folks. Been some hot bats in this series and some big innings. Royals in game one on Friday used a five run fourth inning. Yesterday a seven run second inning. And then thanks to three walks the Royals cash those in to three runs in the fifth inning tonight. Getting closer to taking three out of four in this series. Which would be their eighth consecutive winning series for the first time since 1991. And Jason Vargas continues his mastery of the Minnesota Twins with 20 consecutive scoreless innings. You give the Royals offense anything during this nice little streak they've been on, they'll make you pay. Exactly what they did. Nori tonight is grounded out three times once on a bunt attempt which required a good bare hand play by Trevor Plouffe. This is Anthony Swarzak's second full inning. Slapped out to short. Escobar throws him out so four ground ball outs for Nori and one down in the seventh inning. Now 
now in Fonte. Fonte had one of the key plate appearances in the three run fifth. The Royals had two on two out and Fonte was down one and two against Trevor May and fought back to get a walk and that set the stage for Perez who drove in two and Butler who drove in one. So productive at bat didn't get a hit or anything but he got the rally started. Oh and two against Swarzak. Swarzak gets him on three pitches. Swarzak's second strikeout, two down in the seventh inning. And as promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Jess, Casey Dice Girl, with a what is that an Eric Hosmer doll or what is that? I don't know, but I like the picture, Jess. Eric Kratz batting for Salvador Perez. Crack bat. And driven to deep left field and gone. Wow. Eric Kratz with a broken bat home run to left. As a pinch hitter for Salvador Perez on the first pitch from Anthony Swarzak. How's that for strength? <laughs> wow. He's a big guy and the ball's elevated. Got in on him just a hair, but he muscled that literally over the fence. Look at that. Ball was up and in on him. He didn't even get his hands extended on it. That ball was in on his hands and couldn't get everything extended. Didn't need to. Four. I mean, it sounded like a broken bat. Okay, so there you go. His stock just went crazy. It went up. You hit pit home runs as a pinch hitter off the bench. Your stock climbs and so does the Royals. Billy has his second hit tonight, his seventh of this series. He's on with two outs. So now, not only does that help you in the ball club, but it, it sends a message to the opposing manager that you're playing down the stretch in heated games. And that manager's looking over there and he's going, well, who do they got on their bench that can scare us? Oh, oh, they do have Kratz. Yeah, that's right. He's the backup catcher. But yeah, he's broke. Yeah, oh, yeah. You could tell by the sound. So this guy hits broken bat home runs off the bench. He's a, we're he, not in Baltimore, by the way. No, he's a threat. This is not a short porch left field. Oh, was that impressive? Alex has a two hit game. The Royals have nine hits tonight. Billy with a couple more in a walk. His average is 280, Billy Butler's is, and Alex is climbing as well, 284. Before this game, he's got a pair of hits of his own. Other broken bat home run I think I've ever seen before. Many years ago, Frank Thomas with the White Sox hit a broken bat home run at Coffin Stadium. The bat may have even broken in half. I mean, it was just a display of his brute strength. You don't see that very often. Santana comes up in center field and he'll get Alex to end the inning. Eric Kratz and batting for Salvador Perez in the seventh inning with a broken bat home run to left. There's power in that body.
Tickets for Less is not only your trusted source to buy Royals tickets, but Tickets for Less also has the best tickets to all Chiefs games. Tickets for Less has Chiefs single game tickets now on sale for all games. Your opportunity to take the family to see Arrowhead Stadium at an affordable price is now. Check out ticketsforless.com now. We see Eric Kratz behind the plate. And Ryan, I got to say, speaking of tickets and all that, the crowds have been great here all series even with the twins struggling and with the rain but very large announced crowd so that's been nice to see and i don't know if you guys have had any of this but i've heard a lot of folks here in minnesota whether they be fans or ushers saying over the last couple of days you know what we'd love to see you guys win we would love to see the royals get there much more than say detroit or someone else so i think we're going to see a lot of that around the country as far as people in other communities wanting to see someone new there and get a chance I agree with that I've heard a lot of that during this series and there's a there's a connection I mean we're both off of or close to I-35 not far from one another and for years Minnesota won with players from their system Arcia Whoa. so that puts an end to Vargas's streak of 20 consecutive scoreless innings against the Minnesota Twins and Minnesota answers Pratt's home run with Arcea's home run he was taking his time guess he didn't see the scoreboard while he was running the bases but anyway <laughs> Minnesota's on the board that's no doubt on the inner half he pulled his hands in and barreled it Just the second home run allowed off of Vargas to a lefty. Nothing like a big homer to get your team within three in the seventh inning. Anyway. But yeah, I think there was a mutual respect between the two teams. You know, Minnesota was in the Metrodome and didn't have a lot of financial resources and were able to win. Economically, as Ploof is out on a fly ball to right field. And I think there are a lot of people in Minnesota who felt like, or I should say Kansas City, who rooted for the Twins when they got into the postseason because they were in a somewhat similar market size, somewhat similar financial situation. And yeah, Joe, I've heard a lot too. Twins front office people, coaching staff, fans, ushers here at the ballpark. Boy, we sure hope you guys win the division. Well, and you think about it too, Ryan. I mean, the, their situation, the Royals right now, kind of mirrors a little bit of what the Twins once were with all those young players coming up and, and building a foundation around those guys. I do think there's something about, yeah, I mean, I-35 connecting the cities, but more of both of these cities being smaller cities. I know the Twin Cities, Minneapolis is bigger than Kansas City, but it's not Chicago. It's not Detroit. And I don't know why Cleveland doesn't get lumped in there, but they're... A little bit of a different region than, than this neck of the woods. And then we probably can start becoming Twins fans because they have 12 games left against the Detroit Tigers on the season. So be plenty of opportunities to root for the Twins. Harmony pops out to Infante for the second out. Some of those games for the Tigers coming up on this current homestand for Minnesota. So we'll be rooting for them when the Tigers are here. Vargas right at 100 pitches, six and two thirds innings. And a strike to Eric Fryer. Two strikes. Herrera, if needed, in this inning, but Vargas is one strike away from getting out of this inning.
two and two. Just got a piece of it. He gets out of this inning here. I wouldn't expect him to go back out again. There's no need to. Over 100 pitches. Remember in his last outing where he threw that complete game shutout against Oakland, he was under 100. Oh, what a pick! My. Escobar gets Fryer. That's two gold glove plays we've seen by Escobar tonight. That one was pretty. Call the cops. He ripped him off. One lead, another fantastic performance from him. Panera takes us around the league. Bit of a light evening of baseball. Angels behind Mike Trout winning. Baltimore just one up right now on the White Sox. Seattle loses to Philly, Cincinnati, and St. Louis tied. Our Mazda game break takes us to Philadelphia, not because our producer Joe Libero loves the Phillies, but because they're playing the Mariners. Well, maybe a little bit of both. And that right there, the home run. And that's not bad news, I guess, for the Royals. I mean, obviously their sights are a little bit higher right now. It's on the division, but the Mariners are in that wild card mix, and every game of a playoff contender that someone loses, not a bad deal for the Royals. Guys? Thank you, Joel. It's Josh Willingham, Mike Moustakis, and Alcides Escobar. That was former Royal Andres Blanco hitting that home run for the Phillies. An Andres Blanco sighting. Nice. He got it too. Who Pretty is now first Major League home run since 2011. Andres Blanco is now 30. I want to say he made his big league debut when he was 20, right? One of the youngest. Royals to ever make his big league debut. And it was in Minnesota against the Twins at the Metrodome. Yeah, he was the second youngest twin. Willingham has his second hit. He's two for four. And the Royals have 10 hits again. Only Brett Saberhagen was younger when he made his big league debut. Brett Saberhagen. Just about to turn 20 when he got to the big leagues in 84. That was the year Blanco was born. And then Blanco in 04 was just barely 20 years old.
the details are coming back to me now. We're in the Metrodome in 04. Blanco from Venezuela was facing Johan Santana got his first big league hit against Johan nice. Santana who was one of the hottest things going in baseball. Mm. And then I remember at shortstop he had his first defensive try at short. <laughs> he threw it into the upper deck. He was so excited. And after that we saw some dazzling plays from Andres Blanco. Moustakis is down. One down in the eighth inning. Just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Talk about some fancy glove work. Escobar, he is doing it tonight. I mean, this is earlier in the game. He got a ball back at second base. This right here, he's throwing flat-footed, off balance. And this one here was just a beautiful catch and throw. He spun around clockwise. He's, he can make them plays. Got all the intangibles. Quick feet, great range, strong arm. Let's take a look at this one here. You're, you're, you're guessing where that ball is going to bounce, but you stay with it like that. And you have to have soft hands. You can have a good feel for the ball. When you turn that way with your body clockwise, you don't have a lot of momentum as compared to spinning counterclockwise. You got a little bit more momentum for your arm strength, but he's doesn't need any of that. That's the key, the feel for that ball, because he's guessing, but it's an educated guess. It's a calculated guess. By a future gold glover. Yeah. You put me out there at shortstop, I can guess, but yeah. I'm not going to come close to making the play, and for him, it's stuck right in the glove. Yeah. Well, he's in fielding shape. Ah! Maurer will look at second and then run over and tag out Escobar. Willingham moves up to second base, two down. Davis appears ready to go for the bottom of the eighth inning. Eduardo Escobar, Danny Santana, and Brian Dozier. Royals were able to rest Davis for two days. He hasn't pitched since Friday. You know that's got to be a little different. I'm watching Davis warm up out there, and the Minnesota Twins bullpen is all sitting in the bullpen above him, just watching Davis. So this this group of guys right here, all just kind of checking out Davis. They're watching him warm up. They're watching the pitch all the way into the glove, saying, "Wow, I wish I had his skills." Oh, and two on Dyson. Fryer blocks it. One and two. Dyson went over last night. That stopped a nice little five game hitting streak he'd been on. Getting his average up there. Over 280 now. Staying on top of the ball nicely. 296 with a runner in scoring position. Doing a good job lately of keeping the ball on the ground. That's his game. He has only flied out twice in this series, and at least in my scorebook, those two flyouts were lineouts to the outfield. Now he's made big improvements on that this year. 
understanding who he is. He's got some occasional power, but stays on top of that ball. He's got a much greater chance. Close, but it's two and two. Swarzak came on and got a big out for the Twins. They are still within striking distance, even though they have to face Davis and Holland if nothing changes. But the Royals scored three in the fifth inning. They had the bases loaded with Willingham at the plate. Swarzak came out of the bullpen and struck out Willingham. Otherwise, that could have been a huge inning. And he's been on ever since. He allowed the home run to Kratz last inning. And then Minnesota got the run back on a home run from Arcia in the bottom of the seventh. Staying alive at three and two. Royals at that magic number of four runs a game. They scored six on Friday. Just one run on Saturday. Twelve tying a season high. Yesterday and now four runs tonight. Right field. Arcia plays it on a hop. Here comes Willingham and the throw is cut off. Throw back to first. Dyson is in there. Gerard Dyson makes it a 5-1 game. Very nice at bat there. He saw a lot of pitches, fouled a bunch of them off, and waited for that one down the middle, and he shortened up his swing. Wouldn't try to juice it, just tried to place it out there, a little topspin on it. Yeah. Up that mark with runners in scoring position. Might get him over 300. Willingham got a good break on the ball. On contact. And you know, we saw him make it an opportunity or try for a chance. Willingham going first to third on a single earlier in the game. He got thrown out. But Willingham, he runs pretty well. I'm impressed with his instincts on the bases. Kane bats for the first time. Lorenzo has only started one game in the series. That was the game on Saturday. He is one for five in the series. Big hop out to Escobar and that will do it. But the Royals turn this into a non save game. And we'll see if Ned Yost still goes to Wade Davis.
eight consecutive series. Join Major League Baseball and the Royals as we remember and pay tribute to those who lost their lives or loved ones on September the 11th. The Royals will be hosting the Red Sox. All uniform heroes and first responders have access to $10 field plaza and $5 high B infield seats as a thank you for their service. Go to royals.com slash govx or you can purchase at the box office with a valid ID. Can you believe that was 13 years ago? Mm. Wade Davis with a four run lead. Pitching to Eric Kratz. Kratz. Pinch hit for Sal. Out of the blue with two outs. In the seventh inning and homered. And now we've just gotten word that Salvador Perez left because of discomfort. In his right knee. And listed as day to day. The surgery that wiped out much of his 2012 season was on his left knee. In case you're wondering. Hit hard to right field. Kane is there. That ball carried on him last moment, but he handles it, and Escobar is out number one. That's nothing really major. I mean, most of these guys are playing with a lot of discomfort in a lot of different areas of the bodies, but it's good that Salvador at least said something. That's a very unique, no one would even call it an injury, just unique soreness for a catcher. I bet there's a lot of guys who have a little bit of soreness in their knee this late in the season, but for a catcher, all the strain on the knees, up and down into a crouch all night, pitch after pitch, inning after inning, and for Perez, game after game. It's grinding. Two and one from Davis to Santana. This is something catchers have been starting to use what last 10 12 years right, that cushion right there. A little cushion there helps them. There is not as much. Flex on the knee they don't have to bend as much as the. That uh, that pillow there. I remember Joe Maurer used to wear those with the twins. Mm -hmm. A little cushion in between the back of the hamstring and the back of the calf. Taking some strain off the knees. It's a nice little device. Three and two on Santana. That's what Dave is going to do here. He's going to try to just blow it right by him if he can. Davis has only allowed one run over his last 41 outings. 43 innings pitched. Pretty solid. You know, with a couple of left handers coming up. In Colorado, starters. You know, Salvi might get a day or two off. Maybe, maybe you give him one for those two. Let Kratz handle the lefty. We'll see. That's that'll be up to Ned. But Kratz, very productive. Wow, that was impressive. That broken bat home run. A first pitch he saw. Davis wins a long battle with a hard breaking ball. Two down. Said, I'm not going to throw this guy any more fastballs. I'm going to get him with a nice little overhand curve. A 
and that's been a, a really good pitch for Davis. It keeps him off his fast, straight fastball and his cutter. Three pitch guy. Great command. Good poise. Great hook. Royals have really pitched Dozier well. 0 for 3 tonight. And 1 for 14 in the series. Nasty pitch. 0 and 2. Yeah, he's done. That's, that's three in a row now. Curveballs. He's feeling that. Pass Davis and backhanded by Infante. Wade Davis has another scoreless outing. He has allowed one run in his last 42 appearances. Royals lead 5 1. Waiter, check please. Tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Ryan Lefevre with Rex Hudler and Joel Goldberg. With producer Joe Lavero, director Steve Kurtenbach. Associate producers Al Broughton, Sam Abramson, Dave Holtzman, and the producer of Royals Live is Brian Shapiro. Target field in Minneapolis. This is Ryan Presley for the ninth inning with Infante, Kratz, and Butler coming up. Infante is 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. Presley pitched yesterday afternoon. The Royals scored two runs against him in the seventh inning. Salvador Perez homered against him in that inning. Out to the shortstop Escobar and he gets Infante one down in the ninth. Presley also pitched a scoreless inning on Friday. Fastball curve change mid 90s with that heater. Eric Kratz pinch hit for Salvador Perez in the seventh inning and on the first pitch against Anthony Swarzak hit a broken bat home run to left field. Fourth career pinch hit home run.
And that's hit well to center field. Santana yeah. is back. And it lands. Is that on top of the wall or on the grass? It plugged in the grass. It's gone. Eric Kratz with a two home run game. A broken bat home run to left and a drive to straightaway center field. 6 1 Royals in the ninth inning. He's a beast. Just got over the wall and the grass comes right to the top of the wall. And Eric Kratz has his first major league two home run game. Oh, fastball by Presley right down the middle. Kratz, he knew he barreled it, but I don't think he knew it'd get out of there, but it just snuck over. I think that just gives Salvi a day off tomorrow. Ooh, good try. Santana with a great, great effort there to get that. Congratulations, Eric Kratz. Multi home run game, first time in his career. Another nice pickup by Dayton Moore. One and two on Billy. You know, every time I think of Eric Kratz, even though he's with us, it reminds me of when we were in Philadelphia last year. And we don't see the Phillies. We don't see him in spring training. They train in Florida. We train in Arizona. And it had been a long time since we had seen the Phillies in interleague play. Phillies going to pop it up behind second base. And there are two down. So I was going through the stats for the Phillies from the year before. It was just the second series of the year. Remember, we started in Chicago and went yep. to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And the stats had not been updated. They did not have the 2012 stats for Eric Kratz. They had the 2011 stats for Eric Kratz. And they said he had not hit a home run. So in the first game of that series at Philadelphia, Eric Kratz hits a home run to left field. And I start going on and on about he got his first major league home run. How about that? <laughs> After parts of nine seasons in the minor leagues. Great story. And I'm watching him circle the bases, and he goes into the dugout. And the Phillies really aren't making a big deal out of it. They're just... Giving him high fives like you know just another home run. Well it was. He had hit nine home runs the year before that. <laughs> they tricked you. So. Let it give him some I love. I told him that story and. He was vaguely aware of it. <laughs> I'm sure somebody went up to him and said hey you know the. Uh, Royals announcer gave you your first major league home run yesterday. <laughs> well I can say with. Complete confidence. That tonight was his first major league two home run game. Right, Holtzy? Holtzy is convinced. And if Holtzy's convinced, I'm convinced. I'm going to believe it as well. The next question we'll ask him was that your first major league broken bat home run? That's right. Three and two on Alex. He has another two hit game and has eight hits in this series. It's the first time in almost two months the Royals have had a two home run game. To make that one month. Going to go back to July 22nd. That was the magic turnaround day, remember, in Chicago when the Royals started 0 and 4 in the second half. It was July 22nd when the Royals started this current run of 20 wins in 25 games. Take so those. Alex is on. We're two down. I'll take those home runs any day. Anytime. Multiple. Bring them. Josh Willingham has two hits. And he has scored one of the six runs. Two and zero. I don't think Willingham's looking to doink one in there either. Playing him heavy on the pull side. 
Good idea. Base hit center field. Three hits for Josh Willingham. Keep those hits coming, boys. Thirteenth hit on the night. Mike Moustakis is one for four. He is lined to deep center field twice. Breaking ball is down for ball one. Two and oh. And with his five run lead, that's Aaron Crow warming up. So if everything pans out the way the Royals hope, that means Greg Holland will have appeared just once in this four game series. Out of play, two and two. Six runs for the Royals on Friday. Twelve yesterday. Six more tonight. That is just foul. Joel spent some time talking about Dale Swain. By the way, Dale Swain on this date back in 1999 had a two home run game, homering from both sides of the plate for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Did he? He took over as hitting coach for the Royals on May the 29th. And look at the Royals since then. Leading the league in batting average, fourth in runs scored, fifth in slugging percentage. And we're two and a half months removed from that change. That's hit hard and into the crowd. Tonight is the 21st multi home run game for the Royals and 16 of those since Dale Swain took over. There you go at Cincinnati home runs from both sides of the plate on this date 15 years ago. Dig yourself Dale. Just nicked it foul. Still two and two. Eric Kratz has homered in the inning. Gordon has walked. Willingham has singled. Royals have scored in each of the last three innings. And four of the last five innings. It was a scoreless tie for the first four innings. Jason Vargas and Trevor May. Then the Royals got three in the fifth. Vargas did not allow a run until the seventh inning when Arcia homered. Vargas had a streak of 20 consecutive scoreless innings against Minnesota. Davis pitched a scoreless eighth. And Crow is getting ready for the ninth. One hop to Dozier in shallow right field, and that is the inning. The Royals get a two home run game from Eric Kratz. First one with a broken bat, and the second one to the deepest part of Target Field.
nine. And the Royals have left 10 on base, so it could be a lot uglier for the Twins. Coming up after the game, Boulevard Royals Live. Jason Vargas. He has made four starts against Minnesota this year. He has gone seven innings in all four and never allowed more than two runs. He gave up one run in seven innings tonight. And a big night on offense. The Royals have hit two more home runs and have scored six, so no need for Greg Holland. Aaron Crow will pitch to Maurer, Vargas, and Arcia. And Escobar put a clinic on and playing defense out there at shortstop. Great plays. Three beauties. Mauer one for three. Doesn't seem like a big deal now, but it was at the time when he struck out back in the first inning. He claimed he made contact, which it looked like he did, and that it hit the dirt, which it looked like it did, but Chris Siegel, the home plate umpire, didn't see it that way. Ron Gardenhire argued and was ejected in the bottom of the first inning. That was tonight? Yeah, that seems like an awfully long time ago. I could, I knew it was going to happen. I could see it coming. And then, then when he walked off and went down in the dugout, I'm sure somebody saw the replay and went, yep, you were right, Guardy. It bounced. And then that's when he came back out of the dugout and got tossed. Maurer has kept Alex busy in this series. On down in the ninth inning. Vargas for seven, Davis for one, and now Crow. Kenny Vargas is 0 for 3. With regard to the pitching matchups in the Rocky series, which begins tomorrow. James Shields against Tyler Matzik, who is two and eight. Wednesday night, Danny Duffy against Jorge De La Rosa. The Royals will see two lefties. They have not seen Matzik. They have faced De La Rosa. There's tomorrow's matchup. Matzik two and eight with an ERA of five and a half, which can be a little deceiving. That looks bad, but there are no such thing as a good ERA at Coors Field. No, wait till the fans and some of the players get a chance to see that field, that how big it is. I mean, it's a it's a large green area out there in the outfield. I mean, first time I went there as a player, I was like, really? They hit home runs here. That's what we learned about Coors Field the first time we went there. I want to say the Royals. Was it 2003? Maybe they had been there before for some exhibition games, but you know, you hear about the altitude and how the ball flies out of there and how many home runs are hit, and all of that is true. But the part that catches you by surprise is that it's not like they didn't factor in the altitude at Coors. I mean, the fences are deep, but as you pointed out, that makes for a big field. I mean, there is so much room between the outfielders, between mm -hmm. The infielders and the outfielders, those blue pits and the singles that turn into doubles and the doubles that turn into triples. That seems to dog a pitcher more than the home runs.
wide open left side and Vargas goes the other way for a one out single. Last time we were there was 2011. Greg Reynolds to Alex Gordon. Altitude or no altitude. Hit it back into the trees. Hoping to see more of that beginning tomorrow night. That's right. Now, Arcia, one for three with a home run. Took his time running the bases, to say the least. Oh, well. He's young. Nice swing. Moustakis doesn't get him. Moose double clutched. If he'd have found the grip the first time, they'd have gotten him out. He couldn't quite find the grip. By that time, Arcia runs pretty well when he wants to. Close. Oh. So Greg Holland has to warm up. Another man reaches in the tying run will be in the on deck circle. Ball one to Trevor Ploof. One and one. Ploof is 0 for 3 and 1 for 11 in the series. So pitching to Dozier and pitching to Ploof have been keys. Dozier is 1 for 15. And Ploof is 1 for 11. Great pitch over the outside. 1 and 2. Two balls, two strikes. Crow gave up a run on Saturday night, pitching the eighth inning, allowed a home run to Suzuki. That's his only appearance in this series prior to tonight. And we'll do it again. Trevor Plouffe, two years ago, had the same number of home runs as the number on his jersey, 24. That dropped down to 14 last year. He spent quite a bit of time on the disabled list and now has eight. He's had a big season when it comes to doubles. Yep, his production has been declining. Wonder what they're going to do in the future with Ploof. Yeah. Apologize about that. There's a 
guys sitting below us who requires a lot of attention and has been doing that all night. And he's the only one who's laughing. Miguel Sano, third baseman in the Twins organization, third baseman of the future. He went down with Tommy John surgery in spring training this year. Mm. And some thought that he might eventually make the jump to the big leagues, but he lost a year with an injury. Trevor Plouffe into the second deck. He had one home run in his last 24 games. And now a three run shot in the ninth inning to make it interesting. So those tack on runs for the Royals in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings are huge. Aaron Crow is having a hard time staying away from the long ball. Right down the middle, fastball, 91. Perfect hitting speed. It's now the ninth home run that Crow has given up. The Royals went into the ninth inning with the lead beyond a save situation. And in both cases, Ned Yost has to go to Greg Holland. It was a 7-3 Royals lead on Thursday against the A's. Holland had to close it out. And a 6-1 Royals lead in this inning. Minnesota has three. The potential tying runs on deck. So a save situation. And Holland pitching to Chris Parmalee. Leads the American League in saves by two over Fernando Rodney. Yeah, it's unfortunate Crow couldn't finish it off. But you know, the good thing is, is that Holland was already hot in the bullpen. He'd already, you know, got ready to come into the game. You hate to just leave it out there. Might as well just bring him in the game, but you feel bad for Crow a little bit. Finding too much of the plate. Infante to the hole. So that keeps the potential tying run on deck. Parmalee's out. We were in Ned Yost's office yesterday, the day before. Yesterday for the day game. And there is a somewhat inappropriate term for a reliever warming up in the bullpen and getting hot but not appearing. So we were trying to come up with something more appropriate, and we came up with a phantom appearance. We're basically a reliever 
gets warmed up. He gets hot, as you said, which means he's throwing at full effort in the bullpen like he would in the game. And throws enough pitches where it basically mimics an appearance, but he never gets out of the bullpen. There's a strike to Kurt Suzuki, who's going to pinch hit for Eric Fryer. Another word they use are, is ups. How many ups did you have tonight? It means how many times did you get up in the bullpen? Managers try to keep that to a minimum. Delayed call. Suzuki doesn't like it. And Hollins, one strike away. Suzuki two for five as a pinch hitter. Glad he didn't start. Because he's red hot. One ball, two strikes. Holland saved the first game of the series on Friday. And he came on in a 6-3 game and allowed a couple of runs, but finished the game by striking out Danny Santana. Popped up. Billy Butler wants it. Billy Butler's got it. KCW tonight. The Royals take three out of four. It is the first time since 1991. The Royals have won eight consecutive series. And with the Tigers off tonight, the Royals have a season-high two-game lead in the American League Central. Oh, yeah. Smiles all around. Kratz, are you kidding me? You just earned yourself a start tomorrow. Royals are 14 games above 500 for the first time in 20 years. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. How about them all chipping in there? 13 hits.